Welcome back to Goliath. We're doing more troubleshooting tools and setup around your thread network needs because Goliath works great with thread networks and we're really excited about that. Today we're going to be talking about Wireshark, which is a sniffing tool. But Mike, what does it take to get started with a Wireshark sniffing sniffer? Sniffy. So the nice thing is that the program is free and the actual cost of it is the time that it takes to kind of set it up. And that's kind of uh, yeah. why we're making the video today. Um, I think of, you know, coming from the hardware side of things, I think of Wireshark as like a logic analyzer or like protocol sniffer for network traffic. And the challenge that we have with open thread is that there's like several layers of uh, encryption and protocols that you have to have set up in order for you to actually see human readable or almost human readable code. Um, starting out, the nice thing is uh, Nordic has put out a great little tool that uh, comes out with a pre-compiled binary for you to run on uh, one of the NRF52840 dongles. And that acts as the actual listener on the thread network. So it can hear all the packets going back and forth. And then it has a counterpart that you also install as a plugin for Wireshark. Got it. Yeah, much like if you were using, I, I was, I think I started with Wireshark and Ethernet, but it was just plugged into the back of my computer. It had the hardware to talk Ethernet, right? And so it was then listening to the software output there. Now, like you're saying, we need to have some kind of translator to, to hear all of the things that are out in the ether uh. <laughs> right and so getting it installed like nordic has a set of documents here that you can go through they're they're many layered um ultimately they're going to point you to this git repository right here that has in it uh the hex file which is right in here that you would put onto one of these dongles this is just the, the 52 uh 840 dongle um yeah. and then this python script right here is what actually gets installed in Wireshark. And that was a little bit of a trick for me. Um, you actually open up Wireshark and you go to help and about, and it has all these tabs at the top. And so under the folders tab, you can see what we want is the um, ext cap. So global ext cap, which is external capture path. Uh, and when you open that up, uh, you can right. see that I've just in here put put the uh, NRF sniffer Python on right there. And if you do it right, it will end up showing up in this plugins folder. I don't know why it's highlighted. I mean, maybe just telling me uh, that it's something that I added or, or a specific yeah. uh, path, but that's how you can make sure that it's running. And then you would close Wireshark and reopen it with the sniffer running the hex. So I have another one of these already plugged into the computer. That's a key part of it because you won't see this capture path uh, in Wireshark, unless that's plugged in. So right here, I don't know if I can make this larger or not. I can't. Yeah, I was gonna say we're we're gonna have to apologize for some of this is like out of our hands in terms of the uh, the size of the screen. We're trying to record here. We'll make this the full screen here, so it's at least we're trying to record in 10 uh, 1080p. But you might have to make if you're watching yeah. this on YouTube, you probably have to make sure it's on the highest resolution layer here, just because we don't have control over this piece. Yeah, well, let me right. zoom in on this. Um, so yeah, if you if you have properly flashed your dongle and you have it plugged in, then this will appear. It says NRF sniffer for 802.15.4, and it tells me the port that it's on. Um, an important thing is there's a gear icon, which brings up this modal window. Channel is one of the things that you definitely have to check because you have to manually set the channel that you're on. And mm -hmm. if you're on the wrong channel, you'll have a bad time. So my border router... Um, my border router is here. And so I can actually go to status. I, I, if you're, I, I can go. If you're, if you're watching this right now and you haven't watched the other videos that we've done around this, uh, we've shown in the last video as well. And the original video with feet, this is actually Mike's on, he's logged into his Raspberry Pi on a web terminal. He's on the same Wi-Fi network as it. Uh, that's, that's the, the modal that we're seeing here. So this is a page that's being served up on his Raspberry Pi, but you have to know the Raspberry Pi's address on your local network in order to get to it. Yeah, so I know in this form page, it'll tell you what your last setting was. So I'm on 15, it might it might tell you somewhere else, um, not on the top topology page. I didn't see on here, but the other thing is you should be able to go to your devices. Um, and so this is on the Raspberry Pi in OT-CTL. Um, and I should just be able to do channel and it'll tell me that's channel 15, but even on one of these nodes, Got a node here somewhere, OT channel on the node will tell you what you're on. So just make sure that you get the right channel set up for your Wireshark, which I do. 
And we could start the capture. There's a whole bunch of configuration steps though. So let's just walk through um, what each of those configuration steps are. Uh, if we go to edit and preferences, uh, it has a protocols drop down on this box. And the first one that we're going to go to is co-app. If you don't, if people are watching this again, if you're new to the, to the Goliath and thread piece of things, we use Goliath, uh, co-app constraint application protocol, which is a transport layer. And, uh, that is using UDP packets. So that's what Mike's changing here. Yeah, and so this will default uh, when you hover it'll tell you it defaults to 5683 i changed it to 61 631 because nordic told me to i'm not actually sure that it's needed but i thought i'd mention it here uh the next thing that i go to is the ieee standard for thread which is the ieee let me see if i can slide this out i can't um ieee 802.15.4 and on here, there's a decryptions keys option. And the thing is the thread network itself has encryption keys. We talked about setting them on the last video. Um, when you look at your border router under your form, you set the encryption network key right here. You need to tell that to Wireshark, otherwise it's not gonna be able to decrypt any of the traffic. Um, and so with the plus icon, you can add a new one here and you can choose the key hash and make sure it says thread hash. There's only a, a couple, there's Zigbee IP or thread we would want thread there. I already have that set up, so I'm gonna just leave that the way it is. And then the other thing, so um, at this point, we're able to get the UDP packets and we're able to decrypt the thread packets. But then inside of those, you're gonna have DTLS encryption, which Goliath uses to keep your communication secure. So we also want to go to DTLS um, under D, <laughs> up, up, up. I, w I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> DTLS. All right. So this is a pre-shared key. Now this is a uh, got you as well. So um, this is actually, if you hover, it tells you, let's see, it should tell me, pre-shared key as hex string should be zero to 16 bytes. The thing is, if we look at um, our device and we get these credentials here, this this key was automatically generated by Goliath and it looks like it's a hex string because it only uses hex letters and numbers, but it's not. It's still a string string that's using hex letters. I know that's confusing. So I actually need to convert it to a hex string and we can do that with a new tab um, and a magic command that looks like this. I actually got this from Jared Wolf, Chris. He published this yeah, magic yeah, command. This is, that's extra right. thankful to him for that. Yeah. Um, so we put that out there. That's, that's not with my that's password. Though. password. Yeah. 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 So, I'm yeah. So it's basically any generic out. string will be converted. So we've, we've done this for other examples in the past when we've been putting, uh, Goliath PSKs, pre-shared keys into the TLS engine on the NRF 9160, which is a cellular modem. And so this is actually a hex encoded string. And this, these values would be like, they're, they're two value pairs. So that'd be like 0x30, 0x33, 0x62. I think that's how that works. I might be completely wrong. But anyway, we'll go back and uh, this is an old key. So I need to put in the new updated key and click okay. And now everything is set. The thing is my device, which is this DK right here has been off. Oh, my, this is the, NRF52840 DK, this has been off the entire time. And the reason is there's going to be a session token that is passed between the border router and, or actually it might be between the Goliath server and the device. And if we miss that session token, we won't be able to decode any of the DTLS. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. So you're saying, you're saying that we need to have Wireshark running when a new node joins and it, like the initial session starts, is that right? That's the easiest way to do it because when a new node joins and uh, identifies with Goliath, that's when the session token is going to be set. Otherwise, you have to wait for the session token to time out. So when I was originally troubleshooting this, I couldn't. I had everything in the right place and I had all the right passwords, and I still couldn't um, and decode any of the DTLS layer. Actually, and then all the I remember, I remember Mike uh, uh, going through this and, and tearing a few of his hairs out. He said, "I saw it for a second, and then it was gone." And I don't know why. It was like you saw it. It was like this very 
fleeting thing. And it, I think it was because the te the token was going away, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at this right here, this line, can you read this okay, Chris? Yeah, I can read it okay. Um, so uh, this line right here it says... 7 FD7, yeah. Yeah, and it says slash log. So it's actually telling us where it's being written to on the Goliath Cloud, like what the endpoint is. You couldn't read that if it weren't for the decrypted DTLS. And we actually, for when you select a packet here down at the bottom, we get this tab and it'll show us like here is what's being written. Um, it says starting connect right here. So this is actually like a log message that was written to the Goliath Cloud. And we can go back and do logs right here and we see starting connect. So it was that message oh, wow. that went right through, which is super cool. And I mean, you can go, here's all the layers. So you can go frame and then this is the thread and the six low pan and all these layers are being decoded right here. So you need to have all of this set up correctly. And if you do down at the bottom, when you get the, I don't see where the, yeah, DT data transport layer security, you'll be able to open this message up and see what's inside of it, um, just like that. Now I think, um, I, if I shut this off and turn it back on again, how does that work? If I if I stop my capture and I start my capture again without saving, we won't be able to see those messages because we missed the session token. Um, and I probably should have done, like if I press some buttons, we'll be able to see um, some data coming through, but like we're not getting, you know, they had those, those endpoints before and we're not getting yeah. those endpoints. Um, Got it. So you can see that there's activity, but not kind of what's inside the packetized pieces. Right. Yeah. So you get like application data, but you you don't get the DTLS layer here. So you just get this like encrypted right. data on it. So that's just like uh, binary data at that point, right? Yeah, exactly. And then... Well, we should say Goliath is secure by default, which is great, uh, which means that if someone else is trying to listen in on your packets and they don't have your tokens, which they shouldn't, and Mike's going to reset his tokens after this video, uh, then they can't see your messages. And that is something that we're proud of and that we think is important for a lot of IoT systems. The, uh, you know, there may be a couple of hiccups along the way, but the fact that it's secure by default is a very strong use case for Goliath, we think. Yeah. And so now I've shut the device off, I've turned it back on and I'm pressing some buttons and you'll see every time I press a button, the hello fires off. And if you were to look at the sample code, that's part of what it does. But we also get this passed to logs. So we see where it's going. And then if we go back to the DTLS layer, we can see button changed and then it says button one, one. So it'll tell you what the button is. And that's the log that's coming through. If we refresh right here, button one, one, button zero, zero, one. There it is. So, yeah. you know, that it's decoding. Great. So how do you use this when things are going wrong, right? So Wireshark is good for kind of getting booted up and making sure everything's talking, but what would you see if it's not properly connecting to the internet or the Goliath network? Well, so one of the things that we had is we were sending data between the cloud and the device and we were only, we weren't getting any of the data out from the behavior of the device. And then you say, well, where, in this huge stack is the problem. And we were able to, uh, Veet was able to actually figure out with Wireshark, he started going through the different layers and he said, okay, well, we're actually on this layer. We're not receiving all the bytes. We're like 14 bytes short or something. He was able to diagnose it down to like the size of the packet that we were setting in order to be able to send it through all the layers. So I think this is a really good use case for it. There's, you know, I like to say that mesh networking feels like magic. And the more ways that technology feels like magic, the harder it is to be yeah. able to troubleshoot that. And so having a tool like this that can show you like every single component that's going into these transmissions back and forth is, is I, you can't work without it. And so I think this should be part of your core skills in standing up and, and learning to use an open thread network. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, more decoding of magic around here on Goliath. Mike, thanks for showing us Wireshark. Anything else we should know about about the uh, troubleshooting process or this system? I don't think so, but I, you know, we've got a guide up on Goliath for you to get started on this. And I think the best way is to just dive in. If you have problems, hit our Discord channel and we'd be glad to talk about it. Mm -hmm.